This is how I weave in ends at the top of something that has been grafted closed. In this case, it's a mitten. It could be a sock. It could be anything where live stitches are brought together and sewn closed with a grafting pattern like Kitchener Stitch. You want to make sure that you have left yourself a decent length of tail and not overly long. And by overly long, I mean more than 12 inches. This one is longer than I would normally leave because I was using it to graft this closed. If it were any other kind of tail, six to eight inches is plenty. You don't want to leave it too short. You're gonna see why but too long and you've got a lot of thread to pull through your fabric. If you've left it too long, you can always trim it shorter. For reference sake, a dollar bill is six inches long. Six inches. This isn't too bad, but you can just trim them. They're going away anyway. With something that has been grafted closed, I often We'll put my hand down inside of it just so I can see what I'm doing. Um, this is some place where if you have a darning egg, you might want to use something like that, something you can shove up inside your work because what you don't want to do with something with multiple layers is sew them together. What I'm going to do, let me zoom in here, is show you where the yarn comes out. So the yarn is coming out here. And I want to take the tip of my tapestry needle and poke it through that hole to the inside. And if you could see inside here, you would see that my finger is right up in here. And I've got the tip of this thankfully not super pointy needle shoved to my fingertip so I can make sure I don't accidentally run it through any of the yarn. And now I've pushed it down until I can get that point where my needle is entering into my thumb and finger and I'm going to pinch them and hold while I turn the mitten inside out. This particular mitten is ribbed. So I have places where I can hide the tail that are going to be very unobtrusive. Anytime you can see a strong line, that's what I call a visual break. Your eye already expects to see some distortion in the pattern there. If we hold this out and look at it, you can see there's one on this side. There's one on this side. Anything I do that goes back and forth across the top here is going to show because this is all strong vertical lines. So running a horizontal line across the top of it is going to cause it to be very visible. It's also going to work against the nature of the fabric. This is ribbed. It wants to pull together. If I run my thread back and forth across it, it's going to spread this out and it won't ever relax again because now it's got extra yarn shoved in between each of the stitches. So my inclination here is to not run it back and forth across the top. Instead, what I want to do with it is I want to hide it along this line of stitches. <clears throat> Realizing that your tail is probably six inches long, I don't want to run all six inches of this into my knitting. I want to go about an inch, which is about half the length of this tapestry needle. I am going to start by taking the tip of my tapestry needle and not working into this first stitch because guess what's going to happen? I have the possibility of undoing what's been done. So instead, I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to pick up each of the left legs all the way down this stitch for about an inch. Six to seven stitches, probably safe to say it's about an inch or about half the length of this tapestry needle. I'm going to pull my tapestry needle through the stitches. I wanna make sure when I do that, that I am not bringing this down super tight and gathering it up because it will never stretch properly again. Then here's where I stopped. I'm going to take my, my yarn and I'm gonna push it through to the other side. Just go under, underneath one complete stitch to the other side. Pull it through. I'm gonna turn my work over because, well, it's just more comfortable for me. 
And now I'm going to run it up along the side of the same stitch, but opposite where I ran the first one. So I ran it all the way down here. Now I'm gonna take it and run it all the way up here. When I do that and pull, I want to make sure that I'm not causing any puckering right here. The reason for the U-turn is because this bend is going to take all of the friction and it will stop the tail from pulling out. It may pop underneath a couple of these, but it's not going to pull all the way out and all the way back up. Plenty good the way it is. Now you want to make sure that you have a sharp pair of tapestry needles or tapestry scissors, something nice and sharp, pointy, that's not going to make you have to feel like you're gnawing at the yarn to get it cut. And you, you have to be super careful and make sure that you do not cut your knitting. You only want to cut this tail. I've seen it happen. It's very sad. Don't be sad. All right. That is running one up and down a rib. I often use that technique in cuffs. I use that technique any place where I have a knit line that runs straight up and down. Thank you.